I can only imagine. And it all in 90 minutes, right, as you zip around the planet. 16 times a day. Well, there is our commander and our pilot, Mike Fink and Zena Cardman, looking up at their rocket. <laughs> big, big hugs, hugs. big hugs. And so Zena must have listened to your commentary yesterday, Daryl, because she was leaning back farther than Mike was today. I noticed that. <laughs> I was going to say so. I was like, wait, Mike Fink has the upgraded suit. He is the only one of the crew to wear uh, the, the version 2, V2, R2, uh, which is an upgraded suit that SpaceX is providing. In the elevator they go from the ground floor up to the 275-foot level. This is a great shot. They were just there looking up at their rocket. Th this gives you a sense of scale. Which is so hard to get in the, sp in the space industry. Uh, yes. You, you see these pictures of the rocket and launch pad from a long ways away, and, and without a person standing there, you start to forget that these are small buildings we're launching into space. <laughs> yes, that's right. That was a great shot to, to lay that imagery out, right? We saw them close up in the elevators, and then we widened out to the, to the rocket. It, it really gives you a sense of scale. Great work by the production team there. All right, they get to the elevator. They have one more uh, set of stairs to climb before they get up to the crew access arm. Well, Zena has some hugs for the closeout crew. Yeah, last little, you know, thank yous for all the work yesterday and today. And uh, getting ready to walk out, walk out the arm and uh, get strapped in. Today's the day. A nice gaze out across the spaceport. You it can is, see everything. It's an unbelievable view. Uh, it's so scenic. And here comes Mike and Zena. Hearts and thumbs up with big waves getting ready to get inside Dragon Endeavor. <laughs> was that a dab? You, you said he was a jokester. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a good time. And so put a hand where they signed the meatball. More on countdown, NASA crews logo. have reached the white room on schedule. Because this is the second launch attempt, they will not have to sign their names along the NASA logo that you see there on the wall. They did that yesterday. So Zena just put her hand on it, gave it a touch, and they'll go straight into making sure their suit is clean and there's no FOD before they get into the Dragon Endeavor, their spacecraft that will take them on a journey to the International Space Station, 260 miles above the surface of the Earth. Talk about Mike's spacesuit. This is uh, V2, version 2, but they call it R2. His is different than the one Xena is wearing. As we split screen to catch the mission specialist doing their poses, looking up. <laughs> so striking a pose. Uh, they're choreographed. Uh, they, get, they get higher marks uh, <laughs> <laughs> than, than, than Spanky and Xena. <laughs> You're listening to our... Uh, Posing judge, uh, General Nick Haig, an astronaut here at uh, NASA, and also a Brigadier General with the U.S. Space Force. In goes the commander 
And now we await the pilot. But his suit is different as he pulls up the front of it. It is more configurable. You can adjust the sizing on it much better than you can the first version. This one has zippers that zip around the circumference of the individual rather than a long zipper that goes along the inseam. With that one that you suited up in, Nick, you, you get into it kind of like you would a onesie, but this one, uh, you get into it the way we got into our clothes today. You're wearing a flight suit, I'm not, but uh, you know, get into your pants, put on your shirt, um, and then zip around. And just like your luggage, which has that zipper to expand it when you've bought too many uh, you know, tourist stuff on your trip, you can unzip it to expand or zip it to shrink it, which gives them greater flexibility with these suits. They can fit them on more people and have to make fewer custom suits for the astronauts. Yeah, a suit fit can be a really finicky thing and and there's a lot of effort that, that has been spent with the, the first version of the suit trying to make sure that every crew member gets a suit that fits. Um, with this new one, there's a lot more adaptability uh, and a little bit more forgiveness in the suit. It's, it's one of those things that's uh, really important. Normally these suits are never uh, pressurized except during leak checks, uh, but in the event of an emergency, uh, they may need to pressurize, and and if they don't pressurize in the right shape, uh, it can lead to injury of the crew member. And here come our mission specialists right behind them. Oleg and Kimia. Flashing signs of Crew 11 with the two fingers extended upwards, they are ready to go. You know what I love about the view you were talking about it earlier that we can see out the windows there is that with the exception of, you know, the occasional launch pad and building and stuff, this is a pristine wildlife refuge that just goes on and on and on so it, it it's natural florida the way it was before you know it became populated yeah it, and it's that contrast that stark contrast of yes. of nature and then this technology like the most sophisticated thing that that humanity can do plopped right down in the middle of it and and that juxtaposition is just uh it, it's eye-catching Get comfortable, Mike. You're going to be here shimmies while. around in his seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to make sure those straps are tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see suit, you know, the pad crew uh, strapping them in inside, but then also outside. Some of the things that you wear on the way to the launch pad are there to protect you from getting fod in the suits or you know debris in the suits. so there's a cover that goes on the umbilical port on the leg uh, there's some covers that go on the bottoms of the the boots once you get to the white room you take all that stuff off because it's clean at that point and and you're ready to get inside um, and then you'll see them strap in inside as well as uh, here in a little bit start to hand them their their you know personal gear uh, which is that satchel that they're going to put on their uh, left left eye. If you joined us recently, you're watching NASA and SpaceX's coverage of the launch of Crew 11 to the International Space Station. Our T0 set for 1143 a.m. Eastern Time. We are counting down currently T minus two hours and 47 minutes. We have the commander and the pilot seated in their positions. And we just saw the two mission specialists go into the capsule and they are getting into their seats. NASA astronaut Nick Haig is here helping us document Crew 11's journey into orbit. 
in our split screen, we are inside and outside of the spacecraft. We're also taking your questions, so please send them in. Hashtag Ask NASA. Nick has given us the goal of getting as many questions answered as we can.